The MPV and MUV space has seen a lot of action in recent times. Mahindra's new Marazzo has a longer wheelbase than the Innova Crista. What that essentially means is that its cabin is incredibly spacious. Now Maruti Suzuki wasn't going to be left too far behind. So it brought out its second generation model of the Ertiga that's now more spacious than ever before and has a better appointed cabin. But the Ertiga and Marazzo are doing more battle amongst each other rather than being able to take the fight to Toyota's MUV king, the Innova. For the Toyota Innova continues to be the most premium MUV on sale here in India. With its incredibly well-built, reliable and practical nature, the Innova continues to dominate the sales charts for MUVs. But what if you want more than an Innova? What if you want an even larger family car that's more premium and high-end to look at as well? Essentially, what if an Innova customer wants an upgrade? Where does one go? Well, until now, nowhere really. But Kia thinks it has an answer. For one of the cars it's looking to launch in India once it makes its market entry here is this, the rather large Carnival. But just how much more does the Carnival offer over an Innova? And for that matter, with the new Ertiga and the Murazzo in the picture, we are here to see just how close these cars have gotten to the Innova's benchmark standards. So sit down and get your notepads out, for each of these cars has a lot going for itself. Beginning with the smallest car of the lot, Maruti's new Ertiga truly looks like a new car from all angles with its new front and rear end design. But it's on the inside where the Ertiga has really stepped up its game with a fresh new layout for the dashboard along with lots more equipment. Now as good looking as the front portion of the Ertiga's cabin is, coming to the second row, it's all beige here and the windows are nice and large so it gives you a good airy sensation inside the cabin. Moving over to the seats themselves, there's plenty of leg space here in the second row of the Ertiga. Under thigh support is superb too for the seat squab is really long and the whole seat base generally is very high up from the floor so it's very comfortable to sit here. Now the overall second row experience in the Ertiga is fairly decent, ride comfort's good, there's plenty of space here. You can uh, adjust the seat so uh, this way you can make more room for third row occupants. Uh, let's hop in the third row now and check out how comfortable that bench is. Now with the second generation model of the Ertiga, Maruti has fitted it with a new rear end subframe, which essentially has allowed them to lower the floor of the car. Hence in the third row, you get a lot of under thigh support because the floor is now lower and the seat pace is higher up, uh, which also means, uh, you know, third row comfort wise, it's quite decent you get a reclinable backrest as well. So uh, if you find yourself in the third row, it's easy to make yourself comfortable. Now when it comes to seat cushioning, uh, there's a decent amount of support, but you have to keep in mind that this is a third row seat at the end of the day. It's not all that comfortable. Having said that, because you sit higher up, the windows are large, it's a very airy cabin to be in. So you generally feel quite comfortable in the third row. Another aspect to bear in mind is that this Ertiga is a seven seater. So in the third row, you can only seat two people, whereas in larger cars such as the Innova, you can seat three people in the third row. Moving on from the Ertiga to the Murazzo reveals a taller profile at the first instance. And when you step inside, the cabin feels larger too. And while the cabin does look inviting, some of the plastics here could definitely have been better. Now, when you get into the second row of the Murazzo, it's instantly clear that this feels like a bigger car than the Ertiga. For uh, you feel like the car is generally wider, these front seats are wider. Uh, you feel there's more space in the second row as well because there's space between the two bucket seats here. Uh, you get these centrally mounted air vents which are nice. You can either choose to flow the air directly through the vents or diffuse them through the side vents as well. So that's quite a cool feature. It helps distribute the air and reduce the temperature in the cabin very quickly. Coming to the seats, uh, they feel fairly supportive. There's a lot of under thigh support. There's a lot of leg room here. So you're very comfortably seated. Uh, I do wish the backrest had better support in the lower back as well as upper back. Uh, but that aside, the seating position is very comfortable. You get an armrest here and you can rest your arm on this side as well on the door pad. So the seating position is very nice. Uh, you get these blinds for the windows, which also help you uh, be more comfortable during hot summer days. Coming to downsides, well, uh, there are no cup holders here. You get uh, two bottle holders on either door pad and you get a cup holder there, but that's quite a reach from here. Also, there is no 12 volt power outlet here. You get a USB charging socket there. That's a single one you get. 
But now let's take a look at the third row about how you'd fare on a long journey in that seat. As good as the second row of the Marazzo is, I'm afraid when it comes to the third row, it's a bit of a disappointment here. Uh, the seat squab is really short. There is no under thigh support. But what's the worst part is that the seat hinges for the second row, uh, they come in your way. So you can't really put your feet in comfortably and uh, you really have a knees up experience here. So that's a problem. Uh, now, technically, again, you can see three people on the seat, but uh, with two people on board, if you try to seat somebody else in the middle, it's going to be quite a squeeze. But when you move on to the Innova, that's when you truly get a sense of just how much bigger the Innova really is than the Ertica or Mirazzo. The cabin has a simple yet premium air to it, and the whole car really feels well put together, and those seats really step up the comfort quotient. Now, when it comes to the rear seat of the Innova, I believe that a huge chunk of its sales comes because of this aspect. For the back seats are really comfortable. They're nice and wide. They offer plenty of lower back support. You have acres of leg room. There's decent under thigh support. Essentially, it's very easy to find your perfect seating position. You can even recline the seat back further or you can slide your seat forwards to make more space for the third row occupants. Uh, but if I make myself comfortable right now, uh, I really don't need much else. This cabin is very wide, the windows are large, so you feel very airy inside. Uh, the roof has some nice elements flowing around it and uh, the air vents and the switch gear, everything feels very nice. You also get this aircraft seat pack style tray, so uh, it can hold up to 10 kilos. And Toyota's really thought of everything really. For the center console, you get a 12 volt power outlet to charge your mobile phones and whatnot. Uh, you also get a USB port here. There's even an aux point so you can play your music from the rear seat. Now coupled with all of this, it's the Innova's ride quality as well, which really ups the game for this car. For in the back seat, no matter what the road conditions, you'll always be comfortable. So while the front two rows of seats provide a lot of comfort and make for an ideal long distance car, uh, let's get in the third row and see how comfortable it is at the back. Now when it comes to the third row of the Innova, the seat back is really nice and supportive. Uh, although the seat base is a little low here, so you need a little more under thigh support. This seat can go further forwards. In that case, I'll be more comfortable over here, but I've set it to my comfort right now. The backrest in fact is very supportive. Uh, the adjustable headrests give you good support as well. Now all things considered, uh, you know, seat comfort and ride quality in the third row of the Innova is actually quite decent and you can do uh, long distance highway journeys as well. Now the Carnival truly is in a league of its own with way more road presence than any of the other cars here. And on the inside, this car literally spoils you silly with loads of equipment and superior build quality. Now the impressive dashboard and front seats of the Carnival are only the starting point for as an MPV when you come back to the second row here uh, there's so much space as you can see I have so much space between the other seat here and between my seat now the seats themselves they're fairly supportive there's a lot of cushioning you get air vents on the top there's your HVAC control so you can control the temperature of the air conditioning in the second row as well over here uh, the second row doors are sliding and they're electric in operation. So all you gotta do is press a button and they'll slide open for you. Now coming back to the seats themselves, there's plenty of under thigh support. There's a lot of cushioning for your back and generally you can't really ask for more comfort in the second row of this car. And entry to the third row isn't that bad either. For all you gotta do is pull on this lever and the whole seat just comes forward so I can get in very easily. So here now seated in the third row, I haven't seen this much leg space in any MPV in the third row. There's really a lot of it. And uh, well, when it comes to seat comfort, you can again recline this backrest, so there's a lot of space. Having said that, the seat squab is a little short. There is a fairly decent amount of under thigh support, but even then, uh, a longer seat squab would have generally improved comfort. Sitting here, uh, I get two cup holders, uh, I get air vents of my own. Uh, you can see the third passenger here as well. There's a seat bill, of course, for that. The new Ertiga is powered by Maruti's new 1.5 litre petrol engine that has definitely given it more energy out on the road. This engine is good for 103 bhp of max power and 138 newton meters of peak torque. 
and the car we're driving came with a five-speed manual gearbox. So this engine is fairly tractable. There's always enough power out on the road and it's very comfortable to drive too for the gear shifts are very light and the clutch is extremely light. And because it can pull from very low RPM very well, you don't need to carry out those many gear changes. Now Maruti has given this car a new front end subframe and a new rear end subframe. The rear axle too is new. Another crucial change that this car has seen over its predecessor is that the steering wheel is now much lighter and body control generally feels much lighter than the earlier model. So the Ertiga as a people mover is in fact very easy to drive. It doesn't feel like a large MPV and you know it has very car-like driving dynamics. So this is going to be suitable to a lot of family drivers who drive their cars personally, who ferry their families around on a personal basis. Mahindra's Marazzo is a very different animal from any other Mahindra out there in terms of drivability and refinement as Mahindra has really gone to great lengths to make this MPV have more car-like driving dynamics. Now as you may be aware, Mahindra has put a lot of effort into the Marazzo. They've in fact given this car a brand new engine as well. It's a 1.5 litre four-cylinder unit that's good for 121 bhp. Now this engine on its own is actually quite decent. Acceleration is fairly linear and peak torque kicks in at 1750 rpm but despite that from as low as 1300 rpm there's a very decent amount of pulling power and uh, in a sense you don't have to carry out too many gear changes in this car uh, at slow moving traffic speeds. Now the engine revs fairly freely uh, up to just past 3000 rpm uh, from then on you can feel that it's getting a little strained. So uh, performance is quite decent and adequate, but you have to remember that this is an MPV. So once you get a full load of passengers and luggage, uh, that severely impacts the power to weight ratio of this car. Uh, that's when out on highways, you will feel that acceleration is slower. The ride of the Mirazzo is actually quite impressive at lower speeds. Uh, it's very quiet, there's close to little and no NVH. So that's very impressive and in general the ride's good but once you pick up speeds and you come across sharper bumps that's when they tend to seep into the cabin and uh, the ride does get a little bumpy in this car. The Murazzo comes with a six-speed manual gearbox there is no automatic option for this car. Uh, the clutch is very light and that's quite a good thing but it's quite springy there's a lot of travel there. Now the Innova may very well be significantly more expensive than the Murazzo but it is also in a different league thanks to a more powerful set of engines, choice of automatic options and of course a more spacious cabin. So I've been driving around in this Innova now for a couple of days and I'd be lying if I said that I didn't love it because uh, despite uh, its large dimensions, uh, the automatic gearbox and the light steering wheel make driving this car in the city an absolute breeze. You know, you don't even feel the size of it. It's just extremely comfortable to drive, even in stop-start traffic. So uh, on that front, this thing is very good. Uh, but out on the highway as well, it does not disappoint because there's plenty of power. In fact, I can drive around in eco mode in the city all day and, you know, I won't feel the lack of power as such. But if you come out of eco mode and drive in the normal mode, power delivery is very linear. There's a decent pulling power coming from the engine. So that's all very comfortable and uh, it gives you good confidence. The gearbox, in fact, uh, is very smooth in going about its business. And most of the time when you're not paying attention, you won't even realize uh, when a gear change happens. And if you switch the engine to power mode and put the gearbox in sport mode, this thing really takes off. There's a lot of power and you can carry out swift overtaking moves on the highway really quickly. So that's really good. Uh, so then this thing, however good it is in the city, it's equally as good on the highway. So the Innova's ride comfort is actually quite good, no matter where you're seated in the cabin, because it does not get bumpy even in the second or third rows. As evident from its interiors and exteriors, the Carnival truly is a markedly different machine here, for this one drives like a proper motorway vehicle. Now there's no getting away from the sheer size of this thing. Uh, the Carnival in fact is longer than a Land Rover Discovery. But be that as it may, once you get behind the wheel of this car, uh, the Carnival instantly shrinks around you. Body control is very good. Having said that, visibility out of the cabin is very good and uh, in fact it's not very difficult to maneuver this car because of the large mirrors uh, and the camera displays, so it's quite easy to navigate. 
The engine is mated to a six-speed torque converter gearbox. Uh, now, Kia has done a brilliant job of setting up the powertrain of this car because power delivery is extremely smooth and linear and uh, the gearbox goes about its business in an absolutely seamless manner. So driving within the city is actually quite easy uh, because of the smooth nature of this powertrain. Now I've driven this carnival out on open highways and expressways as well. And I have to say that uh, the 197 BHP engine provides a nice and continuous surge of power that lets you maintain triple digit speeds in absolute ease. In fact, you can sense that this car was set up for open motorway cruising. Now, keeping with its premium nature, the Carnival's ride quality too is quite impressive and occupants seated in any part of the cabin have a very comfortable experience no matter where they're seated. Each of these cars then have a lot to offer in terms of the seven seat experience. The Ertiga may be the smallest car here, but its cabin offers so much space for all occupants that it truly is a wholesome product. The Murazzo in the third row, you might struggle a bit because of the second row seat hinges, but then its bigger and more powerful diesel engine puts it in a segment above. As for the Innova, well, it continues to be the MUV king by a huge margin and with good reason for all of the strong points that I've mentioned here earlier. As for the Carnival, well, once it hits the market here, it's going to be taking the MUV game up several notches. The Kia brand will make its market entry in India around the festive season of this year. So stay tuned for the Carnival's launch, which is bound to take place by the end of the calendar year.